Hi everyone, this is uh, Phil Travis, and um, this week's uh, lesson is on the Columbian Exchange. Um, the Columbian Exchange, uh, and the dates that I've chosen that you see there, first of all, those are dates that I've just, you know, broadly selected as the dates, um, and there are different ways of dating the Columbian Exchange. Um, the Columbian Exchange is a term that refers to a long-lasting exchange of plants, ideas, diseases, people, and so forth between the old world, uh, Europe, and all of those connected with Europe, and the new world, which was the Americas, which beginning with Columbus's voyage in 1492, uh, this was the first time um, in, in the history of a globalizing world that the Americas had been truly incorporated into a direct and continuous um, trade and, and interaction with the rest of the world. And in some respects, ultimately, this is the beginning of the process towards globalization, um, the incorporation of the Americas into a globalized world. This is the dawn of the modern world, uh, or it's the beginning of the dawn of the modern world in a lot of respects, and it comes with tremendous consequences. And in some respects, these are things like this relates to things like the creation of the first um, modern global economies, which, of course, our world today is driven by um, global economies. Um, it's also the result of fundamental demographic changes, demographic changes that are that are driven by um, uh, an almost genocidal impact of native societies in the new world, whether purposely um, through the destruction of culture, um, through through war and intentional destruction, or unintentionally through the bringing of diseases, particularly diseases like smallpox. Um, also, demographic changes. The Columbian Exchange results in the massive spread of of individuals as slaves who come to the Americas as well, and of course, many Europeans um, also coming um, um, as migrants as well. So, the dawn of the modern world. So the Spanish um, were, of course, the first nation to across uh, the Atlantic. Um, Columbus, of course, in 1492, was hoping to find a trade route to Asia. Um, and this is a map here um, that shows you uh, the extent of European exploration in the early um, period, the 15th century. Um, blue uh, are Portuguese explorers. Uh, there's also Spanish explorers that are coming across, as you can see from Spain and, and the green lines as well, um, from Spain and Portugal. So Spain and Portugal really led the way, but um, Columbus um, sailing for Spain in 1492, um, one of his three voyages to the New World, um, excuse me, four voyages to the New World, um, Columbus... Um, was really the first um, explorer post the Vikings to um, go to the New World, to go to the Americas, to establish permanent settlements and colonies. And, of course, they were looking for a trade route to, to Asia. And, of course, Columbus died thinking that, that he had landed in some, some area close to Asia, hence why he called the, uh, the Tainos, the people that were in the, um, the Caribbean islands, the native people that he met, he called the Tainos Indians, and he called the, the islands, of course, the Indies. So um, uh, uh, you get an extent here, an understanding of, of the extent of this early age of exploration. Now, what is really important about Columbus, and you see this just up here, um, is not necessarily that he failed to find the trade route to Asia, because, of course, he did, and that makes him kind of the butt of jokes for... Uh, for um, for some uh, some people for a long period of time. However, he does inadvertently set in motion an extremely significant process, and this process is what we call the Columbian Exchange. So, what the Columbian Exchange really refers to is in a process of exchange, but an exchange of of goods, of ideas, of um, of disease, plants, animals, ideas, economics. Um, it's an exchange process. And 
the result, we really can't even, I mean, it's very difficult to comprehend just how significant the consequences and the results are of this. It's a result in a complete transformation of the environment, new plants, new animals, um, changes in culture and society. Um, some cultures are effectively destroyed while others are put in their place or native cultures are fused with, religi re with religious um, uh, Western European religious Catholicism and these types of things. Um, also economics. Um, this is, most historians would argue that when the Americas are connected to the rest of the world, that it really marks the beginning of what we today refer to as globalization, as in the very early roots of globalization. So global economics really begin to, to develop thoroughly once the Americas are, are brought in. And one of the big reasons for that is because of the huge silver mines that the Spanish um, exploited in places like Peru, in the Andes Mountains. And these silver mines um, became the, the, the basis for pr pretty much the first real like global, global trade economy. And so you have three major aspects, as I mentioned earlier, um, to this exchange. Um, the, the exchange of diseases, new diseases come to the Americas and old diseases or new diseases come to Europe, um, new plants, new animals, uh, new ideas, um, and new approaches to economics, or at least a new, a more thorough economic system. So these are the three areas we're going to talk about, um, in just a moment. So diseases, um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this, uh, about these, some of these stories here. Um, tremendous amount of impact. I, you know, some scholars have, have insisted that the exchange of disease in the Americas is the most significant aspect of the Columbian exchange. Um, particularly from Europe to the Americas, diseases like smallpox, measles, the plague, even chickenpox, but particularly smallpox was absolutely devastating to, uh, Native American populations in some places, Native American populations basically ceased to exist from the scale of the devastation from smallpox. Uh, this image here, of course, you see this image from the banner on our webpage, but this image here depicts um, Native American uh, people who are suffering from, uh, from this ailment, which is a very horrifying um, and, uh, and, 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 and it's not a good way to, to go in this ravaged communities in places like Teotihuacan or Teno, Tenochtitlan, I'm sorry, um, in Mexico, uh, some of the native populations um, suffered up to 80% casualty rates. So, you know, disease was part of the conquest. I mean, if we go back, I'm not sure Pizarro necessarily needs to be in here, but we can mention uh, Pizarro, we can mention Hernan Cortes, the conquistadors, who, of course, were the Spanish um, conquistadors who conquered um, the Aztec Empire and, of course, also the Inca Empire in Peru. Um, the conquistadors were privateers, um, by the way. They did not serve in direct service of the crown, though their empires or what they established there do ultimately in the 1500s become part of the Spanish Empire under Charles V. But um, nonetheless, uh, they were privateers. And they conquered some of the most impressive and, and, and feared empires of their, of their time, particularly the Aztec or the Mexica Empire in, in, in modern-day Central America and Mexico. And, of course, also the Peruvian Empire or the Inca Empire in modern-day Peru in the Andes Mountains. Um, but these conquests could not have been possible without, without the inadvertent impact of diseases on those populations. So some examples of plants and animals that, that came to the New World or, or left the New World. Um, from, the, from Europe to the Americas, you have sugarcane, pigs, horses, just a few examples. Um, and you see this, this iconic image of, of, your, of your native Sioux, uh, Native American on horseback hunting buffalo. Um, but these images could never have existed before the Columbian Exchange because horses did not exist in North America. Um, of course, pigs, too. You know, you say pigs, and 
a person thinks, oh, wow, you know, what's the big deal about pigs? Well, pigs would be allowed to, ro to, to roam in North America free. And uh, as a result of this, they did incredible damage to the environment and the countryside and almost single-handedly altered Native American way of life. Um, there's a very good book called Creatures of Empire that talks about, in particular, how, um, how the hog or the pig undermined um, the lifestyle of Native Americans in eastern North America. And, of course, sugarcane is very significant. Of course, sugarcane is the dominant produce of, uh, of Brazil today and many of the Caribbean um, islands. And so very, very significant when you talk about. And, of course, the sugarcane that's brought there is going to be, you know, you're later going to have African-American slaves, many of them, who are going to be forced to work in these. And so it also facilitated a, a slave system. Of course, the contribution in terms of plant and animals from America to Europe, um, ironically, while many of the things that came from Europe to the Americas, like smallpox, devastated the populations of Americas, of the Americas, um, things that came from the Americas to Europe, in some cases, were absolutely uh, integral to, um, to 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 the health and lifestyle of Europeans. Uh, the potato, particularly. Um, the potato revolutionized the, um, the diet for people in Central Europe and Ireland and places like this. And it actually facilitated the growth of population in Europe because it was a hardy plant that could grow well there and it could be used and kept for long periods of time. And so it, 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 it held off famine for quite, quite often and encouraged a population growth. So the potato was an absolutely revolutionary development for um, uh for Europeans. Um, and of course, there are many examples here. Um, um, tobacco, of course, is an example. Um, cacao is an example. Um, there are many, many, many examples uh, that we could mention from Europe to the Americas or the Americans to Europe. In fact, one interesting example, um, the guinea pig, which the guinea pig, of course, was a, a delicacy in Inca culture in Peru. Um, Europeans brought the guinea pigs back to Europe because during this time period, they were apparently, um, they, were, they were hygienic animals. They would use them to try to keep the fleas off of themselves. So the idea was that people got fleas because they were dirty in these, you know, in traveling. Um, and so people got fleas. But if you had these guinea pigs around, the idea was that the fleas would, would jump off of you and they would stay on the guinea pig. And, of course, Chesapeake. Uh, in Virginia, uh, southwest Virginia, which uh, is where I'm from, but this, is, of course, is the coastal area of Virginia, but this was the heart of the tobacco industry. Um, and you have p images here, of course. Sir Walter Raleigh is in the black and white above the map of Virginia and North Carolina. He was, of course, responsible for the original mission to the Lost Colony, ultimately, of Roanoke Island. Uh, but, of course, you have a colony, a North American colony established by the English, and, of course, it's in the 1600s um, in the Chesapeake area of Virginia, and tobacco became a staple for this. And, of course, this is a huge factor because, like sugarcane, tobacco encouraged the importation of many slaves. And so, as a result of this, part of this Colombian exchange is not only the development of a... Um, uh, a conspicuous consumption of, of, of a product for Europeans, which Europeans became widely addicted to tobacco, it also became something that encouraged uh, migrations of people, both people who wanted to come to the Americas, people who felt they had no other choice to come to the Americas as, say, an indentured servant, or, of course, many people who came against their will in the case of African Americans, as you see pictured here, African American slaves um, in the Chesapeake. So one other aspect here, and I don't want to go too long, but um, ideas of land use, okay? How, how do you use the land? How do you view the land? And ideas are a big factor in the Colombian exchange because Europeans at this time thought very differently than the, the people in the place they were going. Europeans believed in um, making a making. Uh, the land productive, whereas Native Americans believe more in living in a, a more sustainable way with the land, in more of a, of a, a symbiotic relationship. 
So Europeans devastated the land as well. So the land changes fundamentally, I guess, is, is what the big point is here. Um, Europeans, they, they st establish plantations, they deforest land, they farm in mass, um, they bring domesticated livestock like the pig, like I mentioned earlier. They engage in, in mass fur trade that goes to the conspicuous diet of Europeans uh, for beaver pelts that led to the absolute almost extinction of the beaver. Um, and so um, the arrival of Europeans not only changes the people through disease, not only changes people's lifestyles through animals and plants like horses and the potatoes, um, it also uh, brings new ideas that fundamentally alter the landscape, uh, fundamentally alter the way that the, the, the environment uh, was. And of course, mining. And this image you see here, uh, Potosi. Potosi was w w the most infamous of the silver mines in Peru. And, of course, Native Americans were, were forced often to work in these mines. Uh, many of them were suffered from things like mercury poison and excessively difficult, hard work. But the mining of silver revolutionizes the world economy. And for the first time, um, uh, this is during the 1500s, uh, during the, for the first time you see a single currency, silver, really become the dominant world currency. Now, and one other aspect of Ideas 2 is um, religion. Um, did Native Americans adopt Christianity? Um, sort of. Um, they do accept Christianity, but um, they kind of create their own Christianity in a lot of cases. Now, I use this image here, which I took on a trip that I went to, I went to Peru, and this is from Cusco, which was the uh, capital of the Inca Empire. And uh, this is a church, and what you see, what you're looking at is a Catholic church that's been built by Spaniards, and it's built on top of an ancient Inca fortress. Um, and so it's, a, it's an image that really tells you a lot about the collision of worlds, these new ideas, old ways of believing being torn down, and new ways of, of believing being put in their place. And of course, the Spanish went to great lengths to destroy the religion of Native Americans. It's very tragic. Uh, many writings and countless numbers of artifacts were destroyed purposely because they were believed to be heretical. Um, we have lost the ability to ever probably uh, interpret the Olmec, which were uh, people of Central America long before the Spaniards arrived, but of course the uh, Spaniards destroyed the writings at a lot of these, uh, um, um, at a lot of the archaeological sites were destroyed. Um, they were defaced, the writings were, um, in many cases. Um, but um, Christianity is effectively forced on Native Americans, but ultimately Native Americans do, in some cases, create their own unique brand of Christianity, and you see that a lot in, of course, the Americas. And it's a big thing to think about when you look at the Americas, North America and South America. Um, these are places dominated by Christianity, Protestantism, and Catholicism, and uh, this is the product of this exchange. change. The last item is economics. Um, globalization. And I've already, I've been mentioning this, um, and I use these two images to kind of give you a feel. The, 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 the one image here that says Martin's um, um, tobacco roll in the Bloomberry market, this is, a, uh, this is an advertisement in London. So it's London advertising Virginia tobacco. And of course, the other image down here is of, is of a Spanish ship, a Spanish galleon. And it was these Spanish galleons that, um, that brought the silver from the mines like Potosi um, throughout the world um, and revolutionized the world economy and really, really is the first time you can truly say we have a global economy. And so in a lot of respects, it is the origin of, it is often considered, the, this period in the 1500s is often considered because of that um, South American silver um, and the Spanish galleons, that's considered often the beginning of globalization. Now I hope that what I want you to understand here about this, and I know this went a little bit long, but what I'd hope that you guys might understand, might follow here is that um, this is a collision of worlds and a collisions of life, of, 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 of lives, of lifestyle, of culture, of society, of ideas, of economics, of disease, 
of plant life and animals. And as a result of this, you are going to see what was in the Americas, the old Americas, is gone, and you can never see it ever again. It's gone. Um, and it's been fundamentally changed by the arrival of of a new world and a new way of being. And that change was very, very tragic oftentimes, and it came at tremendous consequences. So, you know, just to, to, to sum up real quick, um, so the result of the Columbian Exchange is, you know, a fundamental transformation, a transformation in environment, in demographics, society, culture, and, of course, economics. Uh, the modern world today is a result of this process. It's incredibly significant. Um, and so, ultimately, the Americas do represent a new world, the beginning of a new world, uh, the world today. In the last slide, guys, um, it had tremendous consequences. The, the Columbian Exchange had tremendous consequences. I mean, in one respect, the world we look around and see today is, is the product of it. However... Um, and of course, there's many people who's you know who who thrived because of the Columbian Exchange. Um, when you consider, for example, um, poor people in Germany, for example, thrived because of the potato as a result of the Columbian Exchange. But um, one of the other consequences, though, was of course mass population loss uh, to the Native Americans, slavery, which of course slavery and, and of course the ramifications of racism and injustice were fundamentally tied to the globalized economic system, um, and of course the uh, creation of a global economy in which um, uh, economic profit is maximized at the top on the basis of, of very hard labor for those who are often not fully appreciated for it, whether they're slaves or poorly paid servant labor or whatever it may be. And there's many other elements. I mean, the the, the environment is absolutely. Uh, one place that we could look to um, to to see the the potential damage and alteration caused by the Columbian Exchange, uh, but incredibly significant. And there's positives, but there's also some very very negative consequences. So um, one has to, when thinking about history, consider um, um, the significance not only of it positively for the world ahead, but also for the consequences for those at the time. Okay, guys, I hope this is helpful. Um, until next week.